So hello everyone and welcome to a webinar hosted by the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative. I am Matt Graybaugh. I am the Science Coordinator for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service out of the Science Applications Program in the Southwest Region. Um, I work for the, as I mentioned, the Southwest Region of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, for the last year and a half, I've been the Science Coordinator for the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative, which I'll share more information about in the first several slides as we get into the presentation. Before I worked in this position, I worked for over 10 years primarily on lowland riparian ecosystem management and restoration in Arizona, California, and Baja, California, uh, mostly for a consulting company, but I also spent a little while working for a binational nonprofit on the Colorado River. I have a bachelor's in wildlife watershed and rangeland resources, and a master's and PhD in agricultural and biosystems engineering, um, with all of those being from the University of Arizona. My co-presenter on this webinar is going to be Ashley Simpson. Ashley is a master's student at the University of Arizona in the Ecology Management and Restoration of Rangelands program. Her background is in field botany and ecological restoration, and she's been working with the Desert LCC since October as a graduate research assistant in that program. And with that, we'll go ahead and jump into the webinar. So as you all know, this webinar is on the Collaborative Conservation and Adaptation Strategy Toolbox, or CCAST. And um, we'll go ahead and jump right in. I want to start uh, right up front by saying that this entire project is really driven by the collaborative partnerships that we've established, so I'm going to put this right up front. Um, obviously, I'm with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Science Applications Program, and I work really closely with the Bureau of Reclamation, of course, with Genevieve Johnson, who is the coordinator for the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative. Also from Bureau of Reclamation, we're getting um, technical support from Adam Ricks, who is our GIS and data coordinator, and he supports all of the website activities. Also, D Dina Morell, who is helping author case studies for CCAST, and Jack Truax, who is helping with a lot of the final content uploads to CCAST. With the Forest Service and specifically Rocky Mountain Research Station, we're working pretty extensively with Megan Friggins and a graduate student, Andrea Lopez, who is a University of New Mexico um, grad student being supported by the Forest Service. Also uh, with the University of Arizona, we're working with Dr. Larry Fisher from the School of Natural Resources and the Environment. Another key piece of this entire process is the Science Working Group, which is a regional group of experts that was established through the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative. Um, and you'll hear more about them as we go through. Finally, as you'll see with this, the, this whole project is really driven by case study contributors, so people that are willing to volunteer some of their time to help us generate content for this, what I think is a really exciting effort. Um, I'll mention this again in another slide, but uh, we're also getting support from the USDA Southwest Climate Hub, um, who is funding the graduate student at the University of New Mexico. This next slide has logos for a case study contributors to date. Uh, these were some of the early adopters of this program, and folks that wanted to jump in and help us generate case study material from the get-go. I will say this was to date as of a couple weeks ago, uh, but the list of organizations that we've been working with is growing on a daily basis for this. While this is not necessarily a desert landscape conservation cooperative effort, it was really um, the effort that helped generate a lot of the momentum to get this going, so I'll provide a little bit of background on the Desert LCC and some of our priorities. So the Desert LCC is a non-regulatory, self-directed partnership uh, that has been directed by a steering committee um, across the southwestern U.S. and northern Mexico, um, and that's focused across the three hot deserts of North America and the Sky Islands region uh, that's intermixed. The Desert LCC is here to support, facilitate, and promote, and add value to landscape scale conservation across this very um, complicated geography, across jurisdictional and political boundaries, and so on. Through the Desert LCC, we collectively identify priorities for resource management, science, and really focus on the collaboration piece to get uh, different groups communicating that are working on landscape scale uh, conservation efforts. And again, as I mentioned, this really established the foundation for the case study communication that we'll be talking about through this webinar. 
there are two specific um, areas that led us down this path of case studies for the Desert LTC. The first is through the science working group. So the science working group um, is a combination of expert working groups working to address major natural resources challenges across uh, the Desert LTC region. And the working groups over time have identified the need for an inventory of strategies to increase ecosystem resilience with case studies as examples of those um, conservation strategies. And this has been on the radar for several years for the working groups. Our second big effort through the Landscape Conservation Cooperative are landscape conservation design projects. So we're working in three uh, pilot areas, if you will, of landscape conservation design across this very uh, vast geography of the Desert LCC, being the Eastern Mojave Desert, the Madrean Watersheds, which is the Sky Island region, and the Dos Rios area, which is the, Rio, uh, the Big Bend portion of the Rio Grande and the Lower Rio Conchos in Mexico. There are several objectives for landscape conservation design around defining common goals and objectives, mapping and assessing current condition of ecosystems and so forth. Um, and really the end goal of landscape conservation design is to identify uh, partner activities that can help achieve uh, landscape scale conservation objectives. Um, right in the middle of this process, you see the need to collectively identify adaptation and conservation actions, which uh, you can see could be linked back to the adaptation strategies and case studies of the science working group. So what we've been struggling with for the past few years is how to link these different wants and needs of our working groups as well as some other um, outside entities that I'll get to here. So the science working group of the SWG up at the top, again, identified a bunch of case studies and what they were really interested in is developing uh, communications around those case studies that can be used by land managers to really implement uh, conservation on their um, management area. We also have our landscape conservation design partners. So those are the folks that are really heavily involved on those sub-geographies of the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative geography. And they're also working on identifying strategies and case studies for the sub-geographies. And they want to use those to develop adaptation plans that can then be applied by the landscape conservation design partners. So these are the kind of the two major pieces of the Desert LCC and how they were visioning this. Uh, but of course, we also have conservation scientists and researchers that are not heavily involved in these different efforts of a uh, landscape conservation cooperative. And prior to my position here, this is kind of where I lived as a conservation scientist, doing lots of applied research and management on the ground, but not really integrating that and sharing that with outside partners very efficiently. So a lot of the communication that I did, and I think this is common for most people, is you know, I'd present papers, present at conferences, you know, uh, through lots of personal interaction, do ad hoc communications, but most of that was focused internally within the conservation scientists realm and not necessarily being shared in a way that was useful for land managers. So in thinking through this and also um, thinking through this idea of a management toolbox, we identified how the CCAST, the Collaborative Conservation and Adaptation Strategy Toolbox, could serve as a potential platform to bring these different things together. So the idea is that strategies and case studies could be integrated from the landscape conservation design partners and the science working group, along with actionable science from conservation scientists, so research projects that have management implications. And then through this larger body of work, we could use that to inform the adaptation plans for the LCD partners, and then of course that would go into the landscape conservation design and we would also have, or the science working group would also have a larger uh, toolbox to use to develop these land manager oriented communications. So for us, this was kind of where the light bulb came on as this need that we could potentially fill if we do this thing right. Oh, and then uh, the final thing, of course, is that uh, conservation scientists would also have a more direct way to interface with each other and also interface with land managers throughout the region. Now, this is not a new idea, um, and I'll acknowledge that up front. I'm also really heavily involved with the Society for Ecological Restoration, and we've talked about ways to try to get people to communicate better. 
And in my experience, one of the things that really lacks is, or the missing piece is dedicated staff and funding to make it happen. Um, everybody's really busy and adding something else by authoring case studies and interacting with this toolbox is a big challenge. The unique thing that's come up for us in a lot, and you know, fairly recently, is that we actually have funding and dedicated staff to help with this. So, together with Rocky Mountain Research Station, we developed a proposal for the Southwest Climate Hub to develop a case study library, is how the terminology was in that proposal. And in that case, it was relevant to forests and rangelands, and that allowed us to hire um, a half-time graduate student over at the University of New Mexico. Fish and Wildlife Service Science Applications Program also put together an agreement with the University of Arizona, and one of the um, one of the pieces that that person is working on, so Ashley Simpson is working on, is helping us develop case studies for um, what have previously been termed focal resources, so high priority um, resources identified by the partnership. Again, spring streams and grasslands were the primary focus, and if you've um, been involved with the Desert LCC in the past, you've heard us talk a lot about those. We, uh, science, Fish and Wildlife Service Science Applications also has cooperative agreements for each of the three landscape conservation design projects, and uh, one of the deliverables within that is creating a user-friendly management toolbox appropriate for that LCD subgeography. And then, of course, um, as I mentioned in the previous slide, the idea is to integrate those case studies to develop adaptation plans and management strategies for those landscape conservation design areas. Also, I mentioned this already, but the science working group is a huge resource. Uh, the Desert LCC has merged um, what were previous co previously called our critical management question teams. Again, if you've been around the Desert LCC, you've heard, heard those terms used. But we merged those groups in, into a larger science working group that really serves as the technical review panel for our case studies. Um, and I'll also throw on a pitch here as you go forward to see kind of what that science working group role is. Uh, but we're always interested in bringing additional partners to the table for the science working group piece. So please follow up with me if you want to. Um, want more information on how you might be able to jump in on that. And then finally, um, staff and partner contributions. So those of us that are you know, already funded, um, partner contributions from case studies. And again, so much of this really draws on the collaborative framework that was established through the LCC. So we're really relying heavily on that communication platform that we already have together. Um, one of the working groups for the Desert LCC, um, which was this landscape scale monitoring working group, previously went through a really large effort across the Desert LCC geography to ask managers and scientists what high priority stressors and pressures they were interested in tackling. Um, so what's challenging people in achieving their conservation objectives? And these were the main ones. Um, these were the uh, 11 or so that really rose to the top across the Desert LCC geography. Uh, as a start on you know, things that we could focus adaptation and management strategies on. I'm not going to read through all these, but it's a combination of factors associated with climate change as well as um, uh, human development, to put it simply. And we've also started to work with both our science working group and the landscape conservation design teams to develop high priority strategies to prioritize for case studies. I put a very brief subset together in this slide, so associated with water resources and riparian areas. There's lots of interest in enhancing recharge across the watersheds, uh, finding a way to use less, use less water for um, irrigation, both in agricultural and landscaping settings. Um, a common need, not surprising across all of these, is, is an invasive species control across different ecosystems. Uh, mesquite encroachment grasslands is another one. And then um, desert scrubs specifically, um, you know, controlling invasive grasses and other annuals that are affecting wildfire regimes and uh, changing uh, ecosystems away from like columnar cacti and the Tufan area or um, perennial woody vegetation in the Mojave Desert that's important for desert tortoise habitat refugia. And with that, I'm going to hand this over to um, Ashley to talk to us about what a case study is. And Ashley, it's all yours. Thanks, Matt, and hello, everybody. 
So what is a case study? Um, case studies are on the ground examples of management actions that we present in a common template. Um, these can include restoration projects, monitoring frameworks, collaboration models, or projects that assess socioeconomic valuation of resources. And the focus is on land management projects rather than primary research, although we will include case studies about research that directly translate to management action. Um, the primary goal, as Matt has been emphasizing, is to improve communication across the region in an accessible format and provide this common template to share stories. And the focus of these stories is the lessons learned that are applicable for other practitioners and collaborative groups. And these are often stories that might not otherwise be shared in things like peer-reviewed journals or even at conferences. Um, and all of this will, pop you, will go into the management tool cast and the information will be easy to access there. Um, next slide. So these are the components of each case study. Uh, the first thing we include is the overarching background of the project along with the key issues, so the stressors that the project is addressing. And then we go through the goals and highlights of the project, which can include the methods and other things that um, managers can use. And then what I think is sort of the, the meat of each case study is the lessons learned. So I feel like that's something that doesn't always come across in more technical reports. Um, and then we go on to next steps and we include a list of collaborators and funding partners, as well as project resources and contact information. Next slide. So the case study development process is pretty simple. So far, we focused on groups and projects through the existing Desert LCC network and using um, that prioritize, prioritization strategy that Matt was talking about through our science working group and landscape conservation design teams. Um, but the first thing we do is reach out to project leads after we've identified these projects that align with the prioritized strategies. And when, oh, when a project lead is interested in contributing to a case study, Myself and other graduate students at the University of New Mexico will work with the project leads to co-develop content. So we typically will ask for photos, uh, reports to include, logos, and any other resources that are relevant to the project. And the process of developing the text uh, can vary depending on, or it has varied depending on the case study contributor. Sometimes we're able to draft the content just using existing reports and other times it works more like a, an interview with a phone call where we ask questions and develop the content that way. And all of the content is approved by the project leads before we share it with our science working group. And that's something that's pretty unique to this effort is that each case study undergoes technical review by our science working group. And then the final reviewed and edited content is formatted into two-page handouts and an online version that will go into the Management Toolbox Ccast. And I have some examples on the following slides. So this is an example of the two-page handout. This is one about a project at Las Cienegas National Conservation Area, or actually in the whole Cienega Creek watershed where uh, our bullfrog removal was done and then they restored habitat for leopard frogs. And as you can see, there's all of the sections that I listed previously. And for this two-page handout, there are some space limitations, but the online version can be a bit more lengthy and there'll be links to project resources, as well as contact information for folks who want to learn more. Next slide. And this is what the online version of the case study will look like in CCAST. And 
Matt will walk us through this in detail. This is just a screenshot, but as you can see, the tabs at the top have each section, and then this is where the links and contact information will live on the resources tab. And I think I went through that pretty fast, but now Matt will go through the CCAS toolbox for us. Okay, thanks, Ashley. <clears throat> and hopefully my voice will hold up for the next little bit we have here. I'm still working on getting over a cold, so hopefully that will, I can make it. Okay, so next we're going to jump out of this, um, out of this PowerPoint presentation, and I'll provide a quick orientation, um, hopefully quick orientation on the actual CCAST website. So let me see if I can pull it up here. Okay, it looks like the screen share is still working. Um, so I'll walk through the uh, several different pieces on this. Um, the first, the easiest way to get to CCAST is through the Desert LCC website. And we'll share this again at the end, but it's through the resources page on the Desert LCC website. And um, to get to the actual CCAST page, you click on the link, which is right here. Okay, so now we're on the CCAST webpage, which is essentially a, it, well, is a story map that's created through um, ArcGIS, and um, we'll kind of walk through the different sections and then get into some of the meat here. Um, so to navigate through this page, you just scroll through like, uh, you know, any story maps people are probably getting familiar with now as it becomes a more common uh, tool to use. Um, some introductory information on the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative and the impetus for um, the case study approach. And most of this is content that we've talked about uh, quite a bit in the, in the webinar already. Um, so I'll keep going through that. Has the components of each case study. Um, you know, a little bit on the methods, the suite of high priority stressors as we talked about in the talk already. Um, and then of course, in addition to the um, addressing those stressors, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this before already, so I'll say it, say it now. Um, we're also interested in case studies, of course, on sustained collaboration, uh, monitoring and adaptive management. So the other pillars of uh, conservation uh, at the landscape scale um, that are not necessarily directly tied to stressors. Um, a couple quotes in here from different partners um, on the usefulness of this. Um, then an introduc introduction on what is CCAST. Um, so CCAST is this online, it's the, the platform for finding different case studies that are of interest to you. Um, and then it has the link, for, or it has a link, it has a list of the groupings that we have for the different case studies that we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, so essentially this, using this tool, you can find galleries of different case studies around a certain topic and then use those galleries or an interactive map to navigate directly to the case study content. So the first thing here are these um, case study galleries. So this is where the case studies will be grouped into categories based on filters that we apply to the case study content as we get it. Uh, so we've highlighted some of the key uh, priorities identified by partners uh, through the Desert LCC and you know, work through the landscape conservation design process. So right now we have nine different categories that have been identified for um, groupings of these. And so you can see those here. I don't need to go through, go through all of them, but I will go ahead and navigate into one of the sets so you can kind of see what, um, how that goes. So these galleries you um, can click into uh, from the site. You can either click on the link right here or you can click on the bottom right to open it in the full screen, which uh, for me is easier to navigate. It'll take just a second to load, and I'm making sure I don't get ahead of my internet connection speed here for the video. Okay, so once you're in this gallery, you will see a list of case studies associated with that gallery. So again, these are ones associated with um, grasslands and shrublands. Um, the other piece of this, uh, before I forget about it, on the left you see 
this is a word cloud of different tags that have been applied to the different case studies. Um, so right now there are only three case studies in this grasslands and shrublands gallery. Uh, but as more uh, get put in there with different tags, you'll see this develop more into a word cloud. Um, so in this case, for example, the monitoring, uh, the word monitoring is bigger because it's used in two of the three case studies, whereas everything else in here right now is just used in, as a tag in one case study. Then to get to the individual case study content, you can again either click on the link up top or click on this call out box on the bottom left, which is what I'll select here. And this will get you to the online version of the case study um, that Ashley provided a snapshot of before. Um, so this is oriented into tabs, as Ashley said, with different sections of the um, case study from the handout, from the two-pager handout. Um, one piece of this is this map, which is actually interactive on the right side. So if you scroll out, you can actually see the different case studies in this map as well. Uh, but this is the one that, uh, that we're in, obviously, so that you see that call-out box. You can see the different filters that we've applied to this specific case study on prescribed burns for grassland management um, at Savietta National Wildlife Refuge. Um, so you can see the conservation priority that we assigned is ecosystem integrity, geography is shrubland desert, stressors are fire suppression, and then the management strategy associated with this case study is prescribed fire. Um, also has the, the partners directly listed, um, and there's a link to uh, the handout at the bottom of this, or actually this is a link back to this page, excuse me. The different sections in the tabs are, um, you know, the, again, the sections that is, are associated with the handout two-pager, uh, but as Ashley mentioned, there's an option for a longer version of the text here, and this is obviously an expanded version of the introduction associated um, with the Sevilleta Grasslands uh, Management Case Study. The key issues addressed uh, talks about wildfire suppression and um, native grass impacts on the left side uh, in paragraph form. Uh, project highlights, which are uh, components that we thought were, would be of interest to folks reading the case study. So different, these can be different categories, different um, key, you know, unique aspects to each project. Um, so adaptive management is a common one that shows up, obviously. Uh, fire seasonality, prescribed burns, um, and different components like that. Um, and again, this one is focused, or one of the key um, outcomes of this um, case study is understanding the impacts of fire and drought on, on native grasslands. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm not getting ahead of my screen share here, so um, if, that's, if there is a little bit of a lag, I apologize for that. The next tab over here is Lessons Learned, um, which is bulleted points, you know, key, um, key lessons that this case study contributor wanted to share with other land managers. There's a Next, next Steps tab, um, so what, you know, what are they going to do next, uh, continued monitoring, additional research they're going to do, um, or you know, how they're going to apply the lessons that have been learned. And then finally, um, over in the resources tab, it has a list of resources associated um, with this project, including the collaborators uh, for this project, the funding partners that were already mentioned, um, key contacts for this project with the primary contact entered first. Um, other resources, uh, websites, et cetera, according to this. Uh, the one cool component of this layout, which I haven't mentioned yet, um, on the right side you can see photos that were contributed by the partners, uh, but this actually has capacity to include things like video, so uh, video can be directly embedded in here if you have a webinar recording or something like that. It can be embedded in here directly, or if you have a link for it, we can include it in the resources list. Finally, in the resources tab, um, I'm going to navigate us in a circle here, but you can go directly to the case study, the two-page handout. <clears throat> so this takes you directly to a PDF 
of the case study. Um, it's a, a two-page PDF you can print as a front and back uh, to have as a handout. Um, all the same sections, uh, the management strategy is up here in orange at the top and then the different sections as we go through, again, in an abbreviated format. Um, one of the differences in the, in the handout is there's less space for project resources. So in this case, what we do is we have the primary contact email address listed, and then we have a link back to the Desert LCC resource page for CCAST. And I'm going to go ahead and click through just to get us back to where we started. Um, so this takes us back to the, uh, the resource page for CCAS, as I mentioned. Um, just while I'm here, I wanted to show one additional thing. If you go to the overall resources, you will also see a list. I'm trying to be patient for my browser speed here. Um, in the resources, you will also see a resource page for the case study handouts. So this will just have all of the PDFs available uh, for the case studies that we have to date. So as additional case studies get added in here, uh, they can just be plopped in. Um, so as of right now, we have these six case studies that are finalized, uh, that are on CCAST, and the two-page handouts are available for. Now I'm going to get back to the CCAST page. Again, back to the story map. So we made it through the galleries and I navigated through the Grasslands and Shrublands gallery. Um, there are, again, um, some, a handful of case studies in the other categories and most of the other categories as well. And scrolling through here, the final thing uh, we want to talk through about CCAST. Uh, the interactive mapping tool that is embedded in the each case study page is also available as its own uh, website here. So I'll, I'll click through that really quick. So this interactive mapping tool opens up in a separate application, and I will be try to be patient while it opens up. No problem. Okay, so this application is opened up on my computer, um, and hopefully it's coming through on the video share as well. Um, when you land on this map, you will get a pop-up talking about um, you know, the basic capacities of the interactive map, and I'm just going to click OK to get out of that, and I will show you guys some of these directly. So a few things I wanted to... Uh, navigate through here. The first is, you know, just this, this map has all the case studies together that we have so far. So there's six case studies um, that, are, that are showing right here. Actually, I'm going to, so overview of this map first. Um, you know, the zoom in and out, the home uh, will take you the default extent of the map if you zoom in and want to get back to the full, um, full map. There are, there's a list of layers that can be applied to this map including a bunch of data sets that have been compiled by the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative. And these are layers that are already on our conservation planning atlas. So if you wanted to add, for example, rivers and streams to this map, you can add the shape files with that. Um, but I'm going to unclick it because it's going to slow us down while I'm sharing here. Okay, so that's the basic navigation. Um, this is the, the legend. Um, so when I pop the legend up, it shows the different icons for the different categories of case studies. Um, so biodiversity through water resources, they have different icons that you can see on this map. Um, so you can see kind of what is what. The next thing to show is over here on the left, there are different filter categories that you can use to pull up different case studies that you want, um, that you want to see uh, based on categories. So there's a series of filters that we've applied uh, based on feedback that we've gotten from the science working group and our LCD partners. So if you want to turn a filter on, you click on the satellite button. It's not a satellite button, but the drag button to, to bring it over. Um, and then you can select case studies that you want to see based on the four different values that we have for category right now. Um, so for an example, we're going to go to biodiversity. And 
and you can see two case studies that we have so far on the map that are associated with biodiversity. Um, there are additional layers for the different uh, filters that you can see. Uh, when I drag these down, you can see the different um, categories that have been assigned to the five that we have, or excuse me, the six that we have so far. Um, so all those are different ways to filter, uh, filter through the map. And then just to show you how to circle back to the to CCAST, uh, you can click on um, click on uh, one of the icons. You see the case study, and then it has the same information that you saw when I was on the individual case study app. And then you can click from this to get directly to the case study. And this one is the one that Ashley already mentioned about uh, restoring leopard frog habitat in the Cienega, uh, in Cienega Creek um, associated with bullfrog removal projects. And I will be patient while that pops up. So um, same thing, uh, similar to other case studies that we looked at, it's got the same tabs. All these have the same, the same sections. Um, and you can navigate through those. Uh, this one also just has photographs that show up off to the right. Um, if I'm patient enough to let them load, and then resources associated with this case study. Okay. So with that, we are going to jump back to the, um, to the PowerPoint. Keep going, I'll be patient while that screen share comes back up, and we just have a few more slides to go through before we talk about some questions. So uh, we walked through CCAST, we looked at how you can filter the case studies to see the, the case studies that are of interest to you um, and find those. Um, another goal that we have uh, through, uh, for, the, uh, for the case studies process is to develop uh, thematic communications for case studies. Um, so again, case studies are arranged by topic and story maps. So these will be similar to the galleries, but they'll actually have narratives associated with them. And you can see how this would be, this could be uh, molded into an adaptation plan for the landscape conservation design projects. Um, and again, this is a longer term goal. We can't do this with six case studies in here across all different topics. Um, so this is something to target more toward uh, the end of the year. Um, the story map that I have a, a screenshot of down there on the bottom is just on a science communication article that we did um, last year at this point on fire and riparian areas, uh, but just to kind of show um, any, what we're thinking for how this layout could go. Uh, you have narrative on the left and then a table of contents. Those could be lessons learned from different case studies associated with that, with that theme. Okay, so uh, the next, and um, I'll go ahead and answer a question in the comment box right now. Um, yes, case studies will be added but we're dependent on folks like you to help us populate this thing. Um, so, you know, my pitch here to share your case studies is to really share your stories. Um, and it's also a way for you to showcase your work and your organization's work. Uh, as you've seen through all of these, uh, logos are included for all contributing partners and acknowledgements are given to all those folks that um, participate. Um, I also see this as a tool for interaction with other practitioners and scientists, like I mentioned, a way to communicate the community practice and you know, encourage communication between conferences and things like that, but also expand the dialogue so that folks, um, well, to reach folks that don't attend things like scientific conferences. And I'm going to call out just a couple, um, couple points of feedback that we've gotten so far. Uh, one, you know, we've um, been talking with the folks working on the Lower Santa Cruz River Basin study, and they're interested in using these case studies as a way to help them develop their adaptation plans. Uh, Jeff Bennett, um, an active participant in the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative and also involved in the Dos Rios Landscape Conservation Design. Uh, as a practitioner and on-the-ground manager, you know, always looking for new ideas to guide management um, responsibilities. Um, and really, I think it's a you know, good resource for us to um, you know, offer real life examples. So quickly, a work today on and next steps. 
Uh, as I mentioned, we have six case studies that have been completed now, but we have over 20 that are at different stages of development, and our list of wants for case studies is much larger than that. Um, right now, our ongoing work is to continue prioritizing management strategies and case studies with our different working groups and our landscape conservation design partners. Um, a lot of those partners are you know, folks on this, on this webinar as well, so um, your input on those is, um, is always uh, appreciated. Um, again, we have uh, three, um, three folks working essentially half-time on just developing this case study content with contributors, so they're, um, you know, they're actively really, you know, obviously really busy on that. Um, and late, later this year, we need to develop our, you know, version one of adaptation plans for each of our three landscape conservation design areas, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to integrate this as we talked about early in this. And then, again, getting back to those thematic case study communications, once we have enough case studies to really, uh, to really populate one of those. Um, and it, an important part of this is this is, this is a living, living thing, right? So as we get more case studies, there's going to be more momentum. This thing will continue building. As additional case studies come in, we can populate those case studies into story maps that have already been developed. And, you know, this can be an evolving thing as we go forward. Um, so feel free to contact us. Um, again, I'm Matt Graybaugh. Uh, my email address is there. Most of you guys probably know how to find me if you ended up on this email list. Um, you can also contact, of course, Genevieve Johnson from Bureau of Reclamation, and then Ashley Simpson, co-presenter here, um, as a graduate research assistant at the U of A, and um, you'll find a way to get a hold of us. And with that, I want to thank everybody for um, attending so far here, and we'll open it up to questions. Again, if you have questions, the easiest thing for us is if you type them into the, the group chat. Again, if you can't see the group chat and um, if you have any issues with that, if you hover over your, uh, your video screen, you'll see a toolbar that pops up at the bottom, and the second icon from the left with the green uh, bubbles will open the group chat for you, and you can type in there. Um, also, um, you can find CCAST through the Desert LCC website, as already navigated to and we'll send out um, a follow-up announcement that these, this thing is live. Um, so with that, I'm going to scroll up in here and um, go through a couple of the questions. So uh, one of the questions is, are there case studies only for the desert LCC geographic area, or are case studies from other geograph geographies available? That is, has the case study format been nationalized, or are there plans to do so? Um, the short answer, well, I'll see if I can keep it short. <laughs> we'll say that right now, you know, the resources that we're putting toward this through the Desert LCC and our partners through the Science Working Group and the Landscape Conservation Design Teams, um, we're already working on a really big geography, and we're trying to focus our efforts specifically on these geographies um, so that we can, you know, make sure we accomplish our, our immediate needs. Uh, that said, um, well, a couple things. You know, first, there are lots of lessons learned from outside the Desert LCC geography that are directly relevant. And specifically, I'm thinking about collaborative programs, uh, you know, governance structures that allow people to achieve landscape scale conservation, uh, the, the different LCCs across the LCC network have implemented landscape conservation designs. Uh, we're interested in highlighting those as case studies. Um, because those lessons learned obviously apply to, to any of these large geographies. Um, the, to get to your uh, question about if there are plans to make this more nationalized, um, as of right now, no. Um, that said, there's nothing in the platform that limits us to the geography of the Desert LCC. Um, and I'll also say that the Desert LCC geography boundary has always uh, it's been meant to be fuzzy. Um, so it's not, there's not a strict line, either you're in or you're out. Um, resource management or uh, conservation uh, case studies um, throughout the region, of course, are, are encouraged. Um, and was starting to get out there is, you know, there's no reason that this couldn't be nationalized, but it would obviously take a lot of additional resources. Uh, the first would just be more staff time to actually populate those. Uh, the second is, again, we have the science working group that's focused with experts from the desert southwest and northern Mexico. Um, and I think an important piece of this is having the technical review that comes from them. So if this was to be nationalized or expanded, 
I think there would uh, we would need to do some hard thinking about how to develop the the, the support team for that. Okay, and um, I answered the question about additional case studies added, um, I think extensively at this point. Um, okay, and I think the only other comment we have right now is that it's as important to share failures as it is, as it is to share successes. In fact, it may be a better teacher. And absolutely, um, you know, one of the, I don't think I said it directly, uh, but it's in there in one of the slides, we're really interested in sharing both successes and failures. Um, so case studies of actions that haven't achieved their desired objectives. Um, and actually one case study that's already online is an example of how prescribed fire didn't necessarily achieve the desired management objectives of increasing native grass species. So absolutely, Jerry, um, that's something that we want to include. Okay, next question is, will we eventually categorize lessons so that they can be accessed not just through the cases? And yes, that's, that's the goal, hopefully, of the, um, of the story maps that will be developed based on themes that come out of this. Um, the groupings that we, that we have in mind right now are for those main topics that, um, that I went through, the, um, that are uh, the groupings that are in there for the galleries on CCAS. Uh, but there's no reason they couldn't be pulled out in a different format. Um, uh, but again, it's another um, issue of prioritizing the workload for the folks that would actually uh, pull that off. Um, I want to actually invite you to come back on the line if you have anything to add that I missed or anything, feel free to chime in. And we do have some more time for questions, comments. If you have those, feel free to add them into the chat box. Yeah, I think the only thing that I want to add is just feel free to reach out directly to me if you want to contribute a case study and we can work together on developing that. We're always looking for more. Yep. Yep. And I, um, you know, I present a lot of the high level stuff here and that's kind of, kind of my role. Uh, the ones that are really uh, behind the magic of this are the ones that are, you know, like Ashley, and Andrea and Dina, the ones that are developing the case study content, and then Adam and Jack that are pulling together the, the technology to share them. Um, so they're great resources for you. And then again, um, if you're interested in developing a case study, you can contact me, but I will mostly put you guys in touch with the folks that will help you, you know, co-develop your case studies. Um, so the next question is, how do you ensure that cases aren't promotional but honest self, aren't promotional but are actually honest self-assessments? And, you know, the first is that, you know, first we're kind of relying on the integrity of the, the contributors, of course, to, to a large extent. And then the other piece of that is we're also relying really heavily on the science working group to provide a bit of a gut check on that. And again, that's one reason they're such a resource for us. Um, so. Uh, some examples of that that I'm uh, probably not going to get into right, right now, um, but the idea is that's you know, a big part of what we're trying to get through, um, the science working group review. Um, next question is if we're available, of, uh, excuse me, aware of CAMNET, and there is a bit of overlap. Um, when we started this, we looked at a bunch of different, um, bunch of different platforms that are out there and try to make this something that would be most directly relevant uh, to our partners. Uh, but to answer your question, I'm not super familiar with that one, so I will make sure that we, that we go back and check on that. Um, and another, um, you know, another platform that we're aware of, of course, is the, is the CAKE website, the Climate Adaptation Knowledge Exchange website. Um, I don't know if Ashley wants to chime in on that at all, but you know we looked into things like that and identified how this is different, um, and really you know that it gets to the on the ground management needs of uh, the folks in our um, in our region and prioritizing again our LCD landscape conservation design projects. Okay, so the next question, um, as we know. When administrations change, priorities can as well. 
Is there any thought to what will happen to this awesome body of work should the current administration be unwilling to support the LCC network? Um, and my answer is certainly. Uh, we want to make sure that this is a resilient piece of work. And um, that's one reason that we're developing it not as a desert LCC project, but as a collaborative effort between Fish and Wildlife Service, Reclamation, and the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, we're also reaching out to additional partners that have expressed interest in providing you know, background support uh, for resilience should uh, things change dramatically. But this case study platform has been identified as a, as a long-term priority of both Fish and Wildlife Service and Bureau of Reclamation uh, regional offices. So um, that should help us with resilience in terms of the LCC network. Okay, so the, um, some additional resources for the CAMNET uh, project, so thank you for sharing those. And then the next question is, how is it that BLM is not one of your partners? So the partners that we have right now, well, I should say first is it's not a closed partnership. Uh, the partners that we have listed there right now, so the three logos on the bottom, are the folks that, you know, the core support that are helping, um, that are providing funding support for the the case studies management piece. So again, Forest Service through Rocky Mountain Research Station is providing uh, staff support and funding, and the same with Reclamation and Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, I'm not sure if, if BLM is included in the, in the list of logos on the second sheet, um, but they should be. Or the second slide, I should say. Matt, did you see the question from Roy about the distribution of case studies in the deserts? I did not. Thank you for pointing that out, Ashley. Um, so, yeah, Roy, so what is the distribution of case studies and development across the three deserts and the desert LCC? Um, so we've been trying to you know, diversify these as much as possible. Um, the, you know, the, the dangers, of course, of both me and Ashley sitting in Tucson is that we have lots of available connections here, um, you know, in you know, in Southeast Arizona and in Tucson. Um, so we're trying to do extensive outreach up in your region, Roy, in the Mojave Desert, and uh, we'll certainly look to um, use our interactions with the landscape conservation design teams, including, um, for example, the indicator workshops and the partner workshops, Roy, to help um, generate case studies from those. Um, but we've been really focused so far on just getting the thing launched, getting the pieces together, um, and um, getting the framework together so that we can expand the list of case studies. Okay. Um, uh, Additional comments that's been added here. It'd be interesting for case studies to include something about challenges ahead, since they are all probably a work in progress. Uh, that can inform cross case priorities moving forward. Um, yeah, thank you, Tony. I, I agree. I think that's something we need to we need to highlight. Um, I think to some extent we've touched on it in next steps uh, for the individual case studies, but um, I think it would be great for us to put more emphasis on that piece. So I will, I will take a note of that, and we'll include that in our next coordination call. Okay, I'll give it just another minute here for any questions or comments before we, before we call it into the webinar. All right. Um, Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for chiming in, uh, joining, uh, joining us on this webinar. Um, it's something that, that we're really excited about. Hopefully, we get some contributions from folks like you to help us uh, get it to take off. Um, so those are the primary next steps. So with that, I'll go ahead and call an end to this. Um, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to participate. Um, as a reminder, this webinar was recorded. We will make it available on, our, on the Desert Landscape Conservation Cooperative YouTube channel. Uh, you can access the channel on our website, or you can find it by searching for Desert LCC YouTube. 
Um, and we will send a notification to folks that RSVP'd when that recording is available, and it will go out through the Desert LCC email list. So again, I thank everyone for your time, and I hope you have a great day.